Hello, it's Andrew again, and welcome to the internet and the Blowfish Boat Build. Those who have been following along from the beginning will be aware that the boat is actually getting fairly close to finished, although these videos are probably, I reckon, five to six weeks old. So what we're going to talk about today has already been done. If you look down here, you can see there's a seat, there's two seats actually, there's uh, roller holders, the bow nearly has a foredeck, there's a mast gate. I've even made a mast out of some $2 pine. Uh, exactly the wrong wood for the job, but I think I made it work. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about how I did the fitting out the hull, the gunnels and the seats. Um, and there's a bulkhead in the front, which I think I covered earlier on. I can't remember. Like, been doing this so long now, like initially I thought this would be a couple of months project, but I've been doing this so long now I can't remember what I talked about in earlier videos. And I've watched them so many times when I'm doing the editing, I'm uh, too lazy to go back and check. But anyway, I'd like to talk about how I made the seats and the gunnels. So, in the beginning, I said I was going to use cheap and leftover stuff to build this boat. And as such, I was in a local hardware chain a couple of months back, and they were selling some really shitty radiata pine. Radiata pine is the budget pine you find in most hardware stores in Australia, and I'm guessing New Zealand. Um, and it's full of knots, and it, it can be straight, but often it isn't. Um, as it cures, it, it warps. I don't think they think very much about how they mill it um, and for those who know a little bit about timber how you cut a log um, has a lot to say on how straight the wood will be the timber will be uh, once a little bit of moisture has like you know it's been seasoned or the moisture has been it's dried out a bit and this pine that I bought it was super duper warped and bendy and as such cost bugger all I can't remember what I paid for it. It was nearly nothing. There was a big pile of it in the hardware shop uh, in a rack and it was, you know, we don't want this shit. Wish I'd taken a photo of it. But um, anyway, here's some of it on the floor. So because it's full of knots, these are stress points. If you bend it like around the gunnel of a boat or something, you will very quickly find that the damn stuff breaks. So what I did was I cut it into thin strips of between six and ten millimeters and laminated it round the edge of the boat and this gives the gunnel or the edge of the boat uh, like quite a bit of strength and rigidity um, there's nearly no uh, structural elements in this boat apart from the seat the front bulkhead and the transom yet it's actually quite stiff when i was young we had a little trailer yacht and there was a dinghy that came with it that we could use to like you know, popple around in if we were anchored somewhere, which is odd because the trailer yacht could wind up its keel and go up the beach. But I remember with a small outboard on, burning along in this dinghy and watching the bottom of the boat flex. And uh, this little boat here, this boat's actually stiffer than that dinghy and it's three millimeter MDF. Anyway, so if we're going to put a seat in something like this, we're basically going to just treat the MDF as panel. So what I did was I measured up the MDF for the size and the shapes of the tops and the sides of the seat. And then I laminated both sides of it before I did anything else with it and then trimmed the laminate and then basically put a uh, 10 by 10 millimeter pine cleat on the inside, uh, glued that with epoxy um, and then installed that in the boat and then put the top on. And when I put the top on, I pinned through some MDF so I could pull the nails out. I used a pin gun, but you could use thin brads and a hammer if you wanted. Um, and by using little squares of MDF or nailing through little squares of MDF or any scrap really, that allows you to pull this off and then extract the nail afterwards and fill the hole. You don't want steel nails in your boat. In fact, I don't think you want any hard fixings in your boat. I think you want glue to do most of the work. Um, every boat repair I've ever done on timber boats in the past, I have removed my fixings 
on nearly every occasion and let the glue do the work. The fixings are only there to hold things together while the glue cures. Anyway, um, once I put the seat in, I did some pointless decoration on the top. I, like, I bought a lot of those crappy lengths of pine. So I ran them through the table saw um, and cut some eight millimeter sort of bits out and with some black resin in the epoxy, I made a nice seat for the middle here. I was going to do the back seat as well, but this was so much work that I would like, people in sitting in the back can go to steerage class. Anyway, the other thing I, I did was I put a center case in and actually I put the center case in before I put the seat in because the center case needs to be back a little bit from the front of the boat. It needs to be basically almost directly under the middle of the sail. And in this boat, it's not going to be like that was the geometry of getting that right was just a little bit too hard to achieve. But I still moved the center case back um, a whisker and I've raked it. Um, so that the board can be under the center of the sail. We will, we will find out when we go sailing what it's like. But this is a small boat with a, a rig that is like not powerful, in, like, a, you know, butterfly wings. It, it, seriously, there, there's nearly no power in this rig. So where the center of lateral resistance, where the center board is, um, that's not really going to like affect this boat. If it was like um, a more performance orientated boat and you didn't get this balance right, you would wrestle the rudder when you sailed it upwind. Um, uh, and given the size of the rudder I've made for this boat, I don't, I don't think wrestling is an option, quite frankly. But anyway, one of the things you need to do when you measure your panel and cut it out is, and I made a mistake with this, I think, is think about where the open ends of the MDF will be. So once you've glassed both sides, fiberglassed both sides of your um, MDF panel, you the ends haven't been done. Now, obviously, you'll run a glue fillet round it on one side, but inside the seat, you can't get to that. Well, not easily anyway. And so there are parts inside these seats where the ends I am not confident that they've necessarily been um, sealed, let's say. So if I was doing this again, I would probably, before I filleted all the panels for the seats and the, the tops of the seats into the boat, I would uh, just get a brush and a little bit of epoxy and go around the ends of the MDF, just so that if any water did get inside the, the seats, like from a leak of some sort or, or some sort of damage, then, um, or through the inspection hatch. We're gonna put inspection hatches in these seats. Remember, they need to be able to breathe. We don't want it blowing up like a balloon on a hot day. Anyway, moisture can get in there, unlikely as it is, um, and we don't want the MDF to take on water and swell up and the fiberglass to delaminate and that area of the, of the boat to fall apart. Um, I think we're probably gonna be okay. I'm just gonna leave it and see what happens. Um, this is a test. This is an experiment, so maybe it will work. I think probably it will. Who knows? The other thing I haven't done is put a second layer on the bottom of the cockpit here. Um, as I said, it does flex a little bit, nothing like the little dinghy, the fiberglass dinghy we used to have. Um, but I have this feeling that probably another layer wouldn't hurt, or maybe some stiffening strokes on the bottom, some little 10 by 10 rounded off uh, ribs that run like down either side of the center line for about a meter and a half with some fiberglass over them uh, so that if you like drag it up on the sand or something like that or something that basically the, there's something to rub there maybe they would only stick out this far um, and that would offer some stiffness to the bottom of the boat I'm not going to do that if we over engineer if we over engineer this and it works we don't know what the minimum is so I'm going to leave them out and if it doesn't work, I'll fix it. Um, and if it does, well, we know we, that's one less thing we have to do if we're building another one. And I really would like someone else to have a go at this. In fact, a rally of two or three of these, like on the river, going to a picnic somewhere with a bunch of people and their eskies, because believe me, even though it's small, there's room for two people and a small esky in here. Um, that would delight me in the extreme. In fact, 
my plan is to make um, a small PDF uh, digital book uh, downloadable uh, on the Party Meeple website once I've done this. I will, I will put together a proper text on how I have done this project and people can pay what they feel. Uh, you could have it for free, uh, but if you think it's worth something to you, then I will happily accept an amount of money that you're comfortable with. And basically, if someone built one of these, I'd like almost give them money. Probably not, but you know. So, that was how we put the seat in. And we put the center case in first. Uh, if you were going to make a sailing one of these, and like, why wouldn't you? I think this will be a very fun little boat to sail around in, especially in small enclosed waters where there's not a lot of room. It won't go very far, fast, and it doesn't need very much water to float in. Like, with the centerboard down, this will float in knee deep water. Um, so like if you're in a river system or an estuary system where there, there's nearly no depth, this is a very shallow draft little boat and it will be fun to go exploring those places in, I think. Um, so there's some pictures. Basically, I set the boat up dead level with the spirit level. I put a straight edge across the gunnels um, and I made an assumption here that the gunnels were actually the same. I think they're pretty close. Um, and used a spirit level to get the boat level on this cradle. And then I set up a a piece of uh, uh, plywood, but you could use anything inside the center, center case that I had already prefabricated and plumbed that in the boat with some clamps and some pins and some bits of MDF just so that I knew it was vertical and then I filleted around the bottom of it. And once I had done that, I built the seat around the, um, the center case. Um, I will put an inspection hatch in the back of the seat uh, so that if someone runs aground doing anything more than walking speed um, and cracks the back of the center case, you can get in there and fix it. Um, although I really don't think this boat will go fast enough to do that. Uh, but you never know. Uh, also, an inspection hatch in the seat is also probably a good dry place to put stuff like phones, car keys and things like that. Um, so there's that also. The other thing I've made, uh, which I probably should cover in this, is a mast gate. Actually, no, I'll leave that. There's a bunch of rigging to do on this to make this a sailing boat, and we'll make that a separate video. Anyway, I just thought I'd like drop in. This is a bit shorter than the other videos, um, and it's like, you know, a bit more offhand, but it's really just about adding structure to your boat. It doesn't have to be a seat. It could be a can holder. It could be a rollock holder, like these are, you'll notice the, um, the rollock holding, the blocks for the rollock holders are uh, in the gunnel. I haven't put the rollock bearings in them yet, uh, but that will happen. But the gunnels are on. Um, actually, I probably should talk about the gunnels. So once I had the outside of the hull fiberglassed, I put the outside layer of the gunnels on, which is like two layers of about eight millimetres of pine um, and the pine I used for that was some old crap that um, I had left over from um, a weatherboard shed that I built here a while ago so like really random stuff white ants won't eat it it's hatch three so um, this is a white ant safe boat basically anyway then I fiberglass the inside because I wanted the fiberglass to run all the way to the top of the MDF on the sides of the boat um, and the gunnels to be glued to the fiberglass rather than have these gunnels glued to the MDF. I'm not sure why, because it probably shouldn't matter, but I liked the idea of it. I liked the idea of the structure of the fiberglass running up under the gunnel and the gunnel sandwiching it. I um, put a capping strip on the top. I, I, I left the gunnels about five or six millimeters high and then put a capping strip around the top and then two more strips on the inside. So you can see the gunnels are actually five strips, um, varying in size. Um, I dropped some black pigment in the um, adhesive glue, uh, epoxy glue that I made, which was just resin with the 413 um, uh, adhesive thickener and some fixer trap so that it wouldn't sag. Uh, so that when you can see the glue here, they're black stripes, because I quite like that. I think it'll look nice. Um, 
my plan with the gunnel is not I'm not varnishing anything in this boat I don't think maybe the master will get a coat, a coat of gloss epoxy but all the wood inside the hull will just be oiled or epoxied um, I'm not a fan of varnish it's uh, looks really nice for 10 minutes and then it's a lot of work um, although this boat will live under a cover so varnish probably would be an okay thing I'm just not gonna do it anyway thanks for dropping in and checking checking out episode 7 of the blowfish boat build um, I don't think I've got much more to say other than please subscribe share with your friends and thanks for watching